Tech Talk. I'm John. I'm David. And the subject today is? Colloidal silica enhanced concrete. Ah, colloidal silica enhanced concrete. Good topic. I started working with colloidal silica in concrete when I was a young man and I had a full head of hair. That was a while ago. That <laughs> <laughs> was a while ago. No, I started working with colloidal silica in concrete back in the uh, early 2000s. I had been at the ACI conference in um, Denver, Colorado, so it had to have been like 2005 or 2006 time frame. And Brian H. Green from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in Vicksburg, Mississippi, the Engineering Research and Development Center? Erdak, yeah, Erdak. That, that's right. Um, gave a talk on a rock matching grout. Wow. And if you've never read the paper, but truly we'll include it in the section below, <laughs> but gave its presentation on creating a rock matching grout and, and a concept that they ran into using colloidal silica. And it really, he called it an ultrafine amorphous colloidal silica, UFAX. Oh. And it sounded either like a cool fax machine or a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> so I was interested. We should get some CS shirts, I like it. Right? <laughs> you know. So it, it, it got me from the word go, and then I called up the company that manufactured it. Um, uh, at the time, I think it was Ica Chemicals. And I said, I just heard the coolest presentation. <laughs> And at the beginning, they weren't very nice to me, but we became friends good. after a very short time. That's so good. I've been working with colloidal silica now since about 2006, so it's over a decade. Um, and most of my research in university, whether it was my baccalaureate, my master's, or my PhD, I focused everything on colloidal silica in concrete. And uh, you're pretty much Dr. Colloidal Silica. Let's uh, let's face it. Right. I love it. It's really cool stuff. It takes a concept that we took advantage of years before we ever started looking at the chemistry of concrete and it just takes it to the next evolutionary step. I mean, it is like the iPhone of the concrete industry. Ish. I think it's the next generation. Right. Yeah. iPhone didn't really make sense there, as I said, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you. I think it's the next generation of concrete. I, mm. I, I think that's really a fair statement. Stress training guy. Right. I mean, my participation is all this data flows across my desk, mm -hmm. you know. Here's a reference, here's coil silica. Here's a reference, here's a different coil silica. Here's a reference, here's a new mix. Here's a reference, here's yet another mix. And you know, when I looked at, every time I did not see a single test, not one, ever, that the coil silica wasn't better than the reference. And we're talking compressive strain, flex, we're talking abrasion. Uh, we're talking a lot of different properties. I, I will tell you that there are tests that show colloidal silica doesn't help concrete, and we're going to get into that shortly. Okay. The reason that's the case is that we've done a lot of background work to know or to guesstimate. I love that phrase. It's a combination of the word guess and estimate. I, I think we knew that. TM. <laughs> TM. You know that? Yeah, we knew that. Dang, sure. I thought I made that up. Yeah, sorry. Any, anyway, so um, the, 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 the research that we've done uh, we did our first three years of research uh, with really the, the objective of understanding the basic under or science and understanding of how the colloidal silica size and surface area as well as how the chemistry of the dispersion impacted concrete and how the fluid cementitious paste, including admixtures, affected the colloidal silica. Right. Because there's a, a relationship there. Right. You know, the colloidal silica wants something from the cement, the cement wants something, or the paste wants something from the colloidal silica. Right. So you've been heavily on the R&D slide. Right. You've done the research. You've done the development. You've done demonstrations. I, admittedly, I've come into the party kind of late. I've just been on the... Uh, Don't. It's not in, just. ...into the launch it into the industry side. Right. I've worked on the 494s, worked on the APLs worked on that, that side of the business. And the reason why you brought it out there, so the way I saw myself in the concrete industry was as a cowboy. <laughs> right, out in the West, I had these revolutionary ideas and yeah. it was against the grain. Yeah. I, I, I was the lone... So, um, and I know that sounds stupid. No, it doesn't. But I... We're still seeing some of that now. Well, mm -hmm. I, I rarely, I rarely in the early days worried about convincing the engineers. I knew I wasn't going to convince 
the engineers <laughs> there we go. in a short <laughs> period of time. That's true. It was going to take a long time if my expectation, we did start the timer, That's right. and if my expectation was I was going to convince them overnight, I can always remember that engineer telling me, John, I'm never going to make a 45-year decision based on a 45-minute conversation. Right. And I believe that I could convince somebody to do a demo. I just didn't want to have to convince this guy. <laughs> Oh, thanks for that. So, so in the early days, we were using colloidal silica to um, manage road patches or quick patches or these fast track pavements. Right. Um, and I mean, these were small sections of roundabouts, you know, no lo larger than this section, um, all over the, uh, you know, gypsum to Eagle County type area right. uh, with a specific ready mix provider who was my buddy who allowed us to throw a couple of gallons into the back of the truck every once in a while and we did a small section and you know those have been sitting for seven or eight years right. and the area around them is deteriorating and they're not and they're not now because of that early work because most of that degradation happens actually quite quickly because of that work we actually got a real job and that was the extent of my practical work until Intelligent Concrete was formed and then we needed people like David to help give credibility to show the engineers that we were willing because... Yeah, the hair is gray, um, <laughs> but the credibility is in the performance. The credibility right. is in the data. I mean, right. We've run now dozens, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of tests now. We've done 494s for various... Um, folks, various clients. 494, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very extensive 365 day, many test um, certification, requires a stamp, uh, has to be stamped by a professional engineer. And we've done quite a few of those now. And that, that colloidal silica has always shown, no matter how we've included it in the 494, through whatever medium, right. it's always shown, and it's not just our work. There's a lot of work out there now, there's, there, there's no doubt. I mean, we, we've seen publications in Europe, we've seen publications mm -hmm. from China, certainly there's publications in, from the United States. Uh, it's, it's definitely gaining traction worldwide now, there, there's no question. And the reason why it's gaining traction, chlorosilica is not the friendliest thing to use in concrete if you don't know how to use it. Yeah, and it's, it's like too much salt. Or like a too much high range water reducer or the wrong polycarboxylate style high range. And I know I'm right. getting the chemistry side. That's okay. But if you use that stuff the wrong way, and that's what we learned early on. What we spent early on, what I was talking about earlier, is finding out why the colloidal silica worked in some places and it didn't in others. And that's how we're so successful because we went through the growing pains of it. And right now, based off of the research that you've seen since you've been here. Right. Three years. Three years. And it's not just our research, it's research from other companies across the big blue pond. Absolutely. Like I said, there's a lot of data coming out of Europe, there's data coming out of China, there's a lot of data coming out of most of the world now. Would it be fair to say that you could use colloidal silica, I'm going to give you two hands here, right? Hammer and justice. <laughs> you could use colloidal silica in durability? Yes. Uh, value added performance? Right. Increase in strength. No doubt. Reduction in permeability and percolation. Yes. Increase in service life. Yes. I mean, the four lead to the fifth, don't they? Totally. Yeah. But you still have to talk about that. Oh, yeah. You know, you need, you need to talk about it. You need some, some type of model uh, to, to show it. Uh, I'm pretty good at hand-waving. Right. Um, you know. Well, that, that's where my, you know, <laughs> experience comes in. Yeah. And I hate to use that word. David doesn't like the word experience. Oh, it's not the word itself. It's how people use it? Exactly. Understood. I get that all the time. <laughs> so, um, the other thing mm -hmm. is, um, you know, where can we use colloidal silica? Concrete? Absolutely. Shotcrete? Yes. Grout? Sure. Can we say gunite or is that cheating? It's still some type of shot mortar? Absolutely, mortar. Soil, or cement-stabilized soil. Sure, it's a cement product. So. Cement-based product. And that, that's the thing, what the colloidal silica does is, and I said it earlier, takes advantage of that pozzolanic action, but because we have a very small size, there are other things that are happening, and I, we're going to go into that later, and I don't know if it's a time for this question, but where, 
based off of that, what I've seen is it's great for, you know, just to go into a little bit deeper through, uh, you know, best uses. Making shotcrete stickier to reduce rebound, viscosity modifying admixture. Right. Same piece of that, uh, making SCCs more resilient to um, segregation. We've worked on that, we've got, got good data on that. We're going to be doing some mixes on that. That's why I had to mention that. So okay, yeah. we're not just wasting time. Our last talk was 35 minutes, so we have to wrap this up soon. Okay. Um, there are so many places to use colloidal silica, and the research, funny enough, is already out there. Right. Remember, we said it, you know, Brian Green brought it in 99. Their folks have been using it since 96. And I was speaking to a young lady the other day, and she said that she found research from back in the 1800s <laughs> on the manufacturing of colloidal silica. Interesting. So, you know, the technology has been out there, but our industry has to move slow based on the implications or the liability on the decisions that we make long term. Absolutely. You know, I think the science, the foundation, the scientific foundation is well laid now. Um, but I think there's a lot of people developing products to go into the market. So there's still maybe a small gap to full implementation. We've got some, we work with a lot of different clients. We've got some clients that have been very successful producing products out, out of the jar, out of the bottle, ready to go, into the truck, and then there's still people that are developing products, so. Right, and if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. David's on the ASTM side because he has a lot more patience than I do. <laughs> and I'm on the ACI side, and we're creating our own associations for you know, this type of technology and educating the industry. Because at the end of the day, we don't care to a degree whose technology you use. We're not salesmen. Yeah, I was going to say that too. We don't sell a single product. No, and we, we don't ever. We don't have boxes of jars. We don't have pallets oh, of material. We do actually have that. But we don't sell them. We don't sell them. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, again, our input, I mean, the impetus for what we do is to educate the industry. One of so, our pillars. Yeah, so if you have questions, if you have concerns, we've used it, and we know it works in the field, but there's no science to back it up, or I know it should work, but it's not working, or I've got something great, can it work, or I want to be, become part of the movement. Maybe that's a little dramatic. How do I help? Yeah, you know, we have the experience. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us today. Go Concrete! Beat asshole.